Well, good evening. It is the 17th of July. What gets DEA agents in trouble the most? It's really, uh, it's actually like a continuation of the last one on OIG and the Office of Inspections and OPR. The things that get the agents in trouble the most. Number one, misconduct with informants. Number two, misconduct while operating an official government vehicle. Okay. And number three, you know, chiseling on travel vouchers. Very ridiculous little thing, but it gets them in a lot of trouble. Those three things get agents fired more than anything else. In this particular case, there's no confidential informant involved and no chiseling on a government voucher, but there is an OGV involved. Agent Bryant Neal in uh, Colorado, this took place in Lone Tree, Colorado, involved in a case of road rage, drew his weapon on somebody he shouldn't have drawn a weapon on, and now he's facing felony charges. In Lone Tree, a federal Drug Enforcement Administration agent is facing criminal charges from false imprisonment to felony menacing after an alleged case of road rage. CBS4 investigator Brian Moss learned the Colorado-based agent made a questionable traffic stop and allegedly drew his gun on two teenagers. Then he changed his story. There's a quick video clip of what happened, but it doesn't tell nearly as much as the alleged victim, 19-year-old Mohid Saeed. I thought like 100% he was gonna shoot her like or something's gonna happen, something bad was gonna happen. It started here in Lone Tree, where DEA agent Brian Neal was driving an unmarked government SUV and got into a traffic altercation with Saeed and a passenger who were in this Porsche SUV. Moments later, Neal pulled the car over. But my friend looks over and he's like, he doesn't even look like a cop. According to this affidavit in the case, he asked Saeed, who was born in the U.S., where he was from. Where are your parents from? And I go, I look, confusingly, I go like, Pakistan. I still do believe that it was like racial. Saeed and his passenger told police Neil reached into the car to grab the passenger's cell phone. So at this point, we think he's like not a real cop. Plus, the car is like a Hyundai. So you've never, I've never seen a Hyundai cop car. So Saeed hit the gas and took off, but says in his rearview mirror, he saw Neil draw his gun. So we're ducking because we thought he was going to shoot or something. Neil's attorney did not respond to inquiries from CBS4, but in this police document, Neil initially denied pulling his gun and said he thought the car's occupants had been smoking marijuana. All indications from the affidavit are they had not. After learning the incident may have been caught on camera, Neil then told police he had grabbed his gun and pulled it out of his waistband. He should help uh, the community not to put the community in danger. That, and that's what he did. Saeed's father, who came to the U.S. from Pakistan 30 years ago, is concerned his son was racially profiled. We all uh, belong to uh, the, this country. This is our country as everybody else. Uh, uh, what I have taught my kids, you need to be a good citizen first before you do anything else. DEA agent Neil told police he asked where Saeed was from so they could have a casual conversation since Neil had recently returned from Pakistan. Mohid Saeed says the tone in Neil's voice made him feel the conversation was far from casual. He believes what happened was wrong. I, mean, I just hope that it doesn't happen to anybody else. After CBS4 began asking questions, Neil and his lawyer convinced a judge to grant a motion to suppress the case, meaning all evidence is now hidden from public view. I'm Brian Moss, covering Colorado First. Well, there you have it. Nothing good ever comes out of a road rage type incident. I don't think he pulled the kid over for smoking marijuana. What little I could see of the affidavit, because you can't bring it up. I looked to try to bring it up, but it says that uh, initially uh, the agent supposedly cut off this kid in the Porsche, and then the kid in the Porsche cut off the agent. The agent turned the lights on, pulled him over, which actually he's entitled to do. Under Colorado law, under Virginia law, federal agents have peace officer authority, which means they can make a traffic stop, even though it's not something that they usually do. Now, is it advisable? No, no, it's not advisable unless you're making an arrest for a felony drug uh, thing. So just because someone cut you over, you shouldn't pull them over unless they're really, really, you know, a, a risk to society. But be that as it may, then he walked up. Apparently he had the kid's license because I could see it in his hand just from the little cell phone we had. 
I think the racial profiling thing is BS. I don't think that he profiled the, the kid or stopped him because he was a Pakistani. I think, you know, the kid might have wised off to him or something. Who knows what happened? I don't. I wasn't there. But apparently um, the kid then sped off, and it, at that point um, the agent drew his weapon, which that would not be a good time to draw your weapon. I mean, uh, now as a DEA agent, you can draw your weapon whenever you feel you're threatened. Uh, so during a stop and frisk, you know, or a felony arrest, certainly during a raid, you always have your weapon drawn. Now in a case like this, where you just can't even write a ticket, you gotta call the police to write the ticket. Um, you know, I don't know why you would display a weapon at that point. The rules are, are really the same, I think, for off-duty and retired concealed carry. It's a pretty good, uh, it's a different standard than you would have if you were, uh, you know, out just if you were stopping this kid for a drug charge, which he was not. Um, and that is you keep your weapon concealed until you are sure that you need it uh, or very, very likely to need it. Because what can happen if you draw a weapon on somebody, let's say, you know, I'm a retired agent, but I can carry a weapon under a federal law enforcement officer, the Federal Law Enforcement Officer Safety Act. Say I get into an argument with somebody in the Walmart over a parking space, could happen, you know, and I, the person is, becomes very abusive and then I draw a weapon. Okay, that could be construed as an assault. So you have to be very, very careful when you display your weapon and uh, you don't aim it at anyone unless there's a very, very good chance you're going to shoot them. So, you know, by injecting a weapon into a situation like that, you're just raising the stand, the chances that something bad will happen um, many times, you know. And the other thing you should do is, you know, if he's pulling away from you, driving away, you're not going to shoot at the car. So why he drew a weapon at that point, if that's in fact what he did, and it appears to be, um, very bad idea on his part. So uh, what is his defense going to be? Well, I would imagine he would say that uh, he thought the kid was using drugs. So he pulled him over, which he can do. And then the guy drove away and he was concerned that the guy might have a weapon, so he drew his. That's the only possible defense he has. Um, now what happens to him, I don't know. If he's convicted of a felony, he's gonna be removed from the DEA. At this point, he's on admin uh, administrative duty. So he's restricted to the office. The agency has not placed him out on admin leave without pay as of yet. And um, I don't know if the agency is going to petition to have his uh, case discharged to federal court. I see what happened is that the judge did suppress the release of any info. So that may in fact happen. So we'll have to wait and see. But the racial tones that they're trying to in interject into it now, I mean, everything is becoming a racial incident these days. It could be a badge heavy incident. So hopefully cooler heads will prevail. Hopefully the charges will be dismissed and everyone will go away because there's no harm, no foul, but you know, we'll see. So uh, I can't say it was entertaining, but hopefully it was at least informative. Keep your weapon concealed, especially if you're off duty, you're not making, not doing an official duty and don't get involved in altercations on the road. Have a good night.